I, wanted, I did want sure, to respond. Yes. First of all, I want to acknowledge. I, I'm forgetting your first name, and that. What is it? Kim. Kim was the one who said the brilliant thing at my supper talk, by the way. So I just, <laughs> since she's there, I want to give full credit. Um, you know, I, I want to say a couple of things, Kim. Your question is a very important one. Um, I hope this is helpful, not too oblique. Um, one of the things that we had as commissioners, each, each of us um, had a designated, not a designated, we chose them, spiritual advisor who walked with us throughout our work. And we called on these each in our own way. Um, and most of the time we were not all together in that, though occasionally we did come together. And mine, one of the very first things he said to me, and I'm sharing this with you now. He said, Marie, this is going to take a great deal of humility. And he said, I don't mean humility as the opposite of ego. He said, I mean humility as the opposite of impatience. That things will change and they will take a long time to change and you may not see the changes you wish. You certainly will not see most of them in the lifetime of the commission and you may not see them in your own lifetime. But you need to believe that where good people are gathering and work is being done in good spirit, that things will shift and that other good people will come along and do their part and that over time things will change. So partly I want to offer you that because I think partly answers your question, which is not to say get complacent and you know get cozy with the status quo. That's not what I'm saying at all. Keep agitating. But to do things, I think, in a gracious way and to assume good in the other people. Look, who, look at our room here. Look at the diversity of this room. When I grew up, when I was your age, I was never in a room that had this diversity, never. We were opened up this evening with acknowledgement of traditional territory. Ten years ago, that was nothing close to being normalized and now it's exceptional if you don't hear it. And it's a small thing and it mustn't become mechanical. I think that's very important. But at least it's something. And I, and, and I think form is huge as well. Um, if you have a possibility in your room to influence the form, and by that I mean if a circle can be used, try for a circle. This building is a circle. This room, not so much, but the, the building itself is. That helps people see each other and, and really see each other. And in our work, we found that in many, time, many ways that that's a helpful form to use. Um, but, you know, the, the, um, the thing that I think is really, um, I guess the hardest thing to your question is that I think Indigenous people are going to have to keep teaching. And I don't think that's a bad thing as long as non-Indigenous people start listening. Because there's a lot of catching up to be done. And if we begin by shaming people for what they don't know and have never been taught, we get people in our corners. I think if we find gracious ways to teach people what we have to offer and to listen to what we need to learn, then we can start to inch forward together. So. Impatience, we can't, I, I often say to, uh, to non-Indigenous populations, don't get tired of hearing about this. Do not tolerate, why don't they just get over it? Do not tolerate that. Don't get tired of listening to this. So many survivors have not yet been able to say a word about this. They're still so broken. And so we cannot get, in, get tired of listening. But at the same time, those who have things to teach, I think, I call on all of the, those people who have things to teach to not get tired of teaching.